I teach in the departments of English and History, which are well re represented in the Union. Um, but we have faculty, I was happy to see, in the Department of Economics, in the Business School, which isn't something you might expect, but professors of management are involved, high-level Union activity. And uh, so, uh, mathematics, many fields represented, it's not just one or two departments. I'm out here marching to support faculty's right to get a contract and also uh, for our students so that they can have a strong campus with all the resources that they need and a lower tuition. We teach here at UIC and we're here for a better UIC for our students. Um, tuition is going up for students and we still don't have a contract. Um, and administration is also getting larger and we think that UIC needs to be focused more on students and what they're learning and the conditions that we're working in are the conditions that our students are learning in. Um, so we think it's really important that we're out here today. Well, we're striking because we've been trying to negotiate a contract for almost 17 months after we formed... Over, yeah, over a year and a half at this point. Yep, uh -huh. after we formed a faculty union. Um, and we're striking because our salaries have been either stagnating or going down. Right. A lot of our faculty are paid really abysmal wages in non-tenure track positions, so 20, 30,000 a year. Right. Um, tenured faculty don't get raises. Meanwhile, um, faculty lines are also being cut and administrative right. lines are being increased. Right. And they're wait they're raising tuition, but they're cutting faculty, so class sizes are getting larger, the students aren't getting the attention that they need. And we are not having a budget crisis. We have right. the money Apparently to pay we've for been, The university classes. has been taking in a lot of money over the last few years, but they don't feel that it should be directed toward um, fair compensation for the faculty. We are protesting for wages because based on careful statistical analyses by people more knowledgeable than me, uh, a fair amount of funds are being taken in tuition from a public university that's running a profit. And we all understand that they need some emergency funds for a rainy day, but apparently the full faculty demands amount to 7% of their discretionary budget. It's really nothing, it's negligible. So why they have to have 65 meetings and say nothing and do nothing is quite remarkable to us. We're usually not a rowdy bunch. Most of us would rather be reading books, and uh, maybe we'll go do that after we're done with this. But um, that's why. It's pretty obvious and easy for us. Uh, we have, I have informally told my students, not through the official channels, because I also respect the separation of politics from elements of education, and almost all of them are sympathetic. So I think we have our students on our side, and uh, that only makes us more energized to kind of see this through to the end. Uh, there's so much money that the university is sitting on. They have a little slush fund of unallocated billions actually and we've calculated that they could actually give all faculty a raise they could pay back the back raises that they've been sitting on they could improve the conditions of the campus and they would still have a slush fund of if not billions and at least millions and this is money that's completely unallocated so they don't really need it for anything there are, there's a dispute over where the profits are actually going and it's definitely not going to faculty members um, and we're the ones who are in the classrooms teaching students so if this school and university is about education then you would think that that would be the priority in terms of where these funds should be allocated 300 million of that is is funds that are not being used for anything they're just sitting there accumulating almost 30 million dollars worth of interest a year it impacts them because, of course, they lose a day or two of instruction, and we did that somewhat reluctantly. Um, let's remember that they lost a day or two of instruction earlier when we were asked to take what's called a furlough. I thought it was a farming term, but it's also a way to kind of enforce a pay cut, uh, which was given to us in 2008, and there have been salary freezes for the last few years. So we're not the only ones to disrupt work. The others do it for what, uh, what is their economic agenda, which is to hire more administrators and replicate each other's jobs. I think actually all administrations should be centralized, maybe from a computer warehouse in Seattle, maybe housed by Amazon. And all university administrations could be housed in Seattle. And meanwhile, faculty could then farm out and actually teach people. Why don't we try that and reverse the agenda instead of firing faculty and hiring more administrators, which reduplicates offices. We don't need 12 offices in here that all do the same thing. One for the college, one for the university, and one for the provost and one for the dean of this or that. So let's try that for a change. We've, we've never even gotten a contract. We're still fighting for our very first contract and we've had a union. The union was organized in 2011 and so we've been working for a contract ever since then. The union was uh, 
recognized and certified in 2012 and it is now 2014 and we still have no contract. So our negotiators are going to the table and um, you know they're trying to negotiate in good faith and we evidently are getting a lot of silence from the administration in return. So it's long overdue that we get a contract and that's why we're out here. I understand is that the UIC budget is something like five billion dollars and faculty is a hundred million of that. Mm -hmm. So even if we are asking for them to increase um, wages for everybody across the board, it's, it's, still a, it's tiny a, a drop in the bucket for what their budgets are. It involves back pay for um, this enforced furlough. It involves merit-based pay, which so contrary to a lot of anti-union rhetoric, uh, the union supports pay based on merit. That means just like everyone else, people who work harder will be paid more. We have no problem with that. So for us, there aren't really a whole lot of disputes that should shock the university. Um, there's no red scare here, although, you know, I wish there maybe our country had a little bit more um, protest. Uh, but really, these are just simple things within the normal, acceptable political language that we all speak, being paid for what you do and um, being paid more if you do it better. So I think the union is all in favor of that. We don't understand why uh, they can't accept sort of minimum ceilings of pay, because the general tendency is to fire um, both faculty who are not tenured, and to hire adjuncts. It's the same story in many fields. And certainly we may not win it, but we're going to try, and we're not going to go down without a fight. So that's the idea. Well, I know there's another bargaining contract meeting on Friday, and I'm really hoping that the university administration will listen to the faculty and the students who came out here together today and see that we deserve to get a contract now. I think that that would be a long-term thing, would be investing in your own faculty and your students. But there are broader issues that we're just smaller parts in, which is that funds are being distributed by the state of Illinois to different universities. There's a differential pay issue, which the union has raised, Champaign-Urbana, uh, receiving uh, higher percentage increases. Apparently that's because there's a unionization movement down there. Go brothers and sisters down there. Uh, and uh, we, we hope that um, we have sent a message which sends a minor amount of concern down to the administrators in Champaign-Urbana. I suggest you meet with your faculty down there and settle it before they have to do what we're doing up here. But we're used to it. This one is only scheduled to be two days and we're hoping that that will be enough of a wake-up call to the administration that they'll just decide to actually bargain in good faith and give us a contract. But if they don't do that then we may have to consider a longer strike or another one at least. Uh, when they built this campus in 1965, there were recently arrived in Chicago 300,000 impoverished African Americans fleeing the Deep South. And management, when they built this place, they said to each other, how much do we have to pay them? And they said, well, we certainly don't have to pay them what we pay the majority white workers at Urbana. These people are starving. They'll eat, they'll work, they'll work for pennies. And when I came to work here in 89, nothing had changed. It took a 10 year long battle by Local 73 to win the Urbana pay grade. And of course, there was never any talk about back pay. I'm saying all of this because we have tested this administration over the years. We know what they're like. We know who you're facing across the table. We know just how cutthroat and bloodthirsty they are. They are a, a, not a for-profit operation because they don't pay dividends, but they operate by the same laws. And the only thing they understand is solidarity, human solidarity. A victory to one! Victory to all! A victory to one! Victory to all! Thank you, brothers and sisters. It's beautiful. So next up, next up with Willie is uh, Dana Ahmed, who's a student here, an undergraduate, biology, psychology, and chemistry. Give it up for Dana. Yeah. psychology and minoring in chemistry but would I be standing here if it wasn't for all my amazing professors no. No. so how come my professors are getting paid less than a McDonald's manager 
Why? Can somebody please tell me why this is happening? No? Okay, I thought so. Okay. Um, well, I'm sure you all know that the university has been making $250 million in profit every year for the past four years. How come just 5%? Why can't just 5% of that go to our professors? That will be an extra $12,500 per year per professor. Why can't we do that? Where is all this money going? We are here standing in solidarity with all of, all of you, all, everybody here, because you guys are our future. I wouldn't be standing here. None of these students would be standing here. I won't get into dental school without you guys. So <laughs> I, I'm just being real. I mean, I can't, I can't get to where I need to be if it's not for you guys. Um, I just want to give out another little um, fact. How come our chancellor was bought an $800,000 house by UIC? You guys, you guys know that? also know that she was given $100,000 in furniture, including including a teapot that was $525. Yeah, I don't, I don't really understand that. I don't know why that can't be going to the people that actually teach instead of the people that are in the administration. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, one last thing, I do want to give a shout out to my professors. So... I'm going to start naming them. Dr. Wardrop, my chemistry professor. My professors for anatomy, Dr. Breither, Dr. Marone, and Dr. Jones. Go anatomy! Yeah! And lastly, probably my favorite professor at UIC, no offense everyone else, Dr. Malumbi. All right! Alright, thank you guys. Chuck, we have another really important coalition partner, the Graduate Employees Organization. Is the GEO in the house? I'm here on behalf of the 1,500 members the GEO represents to show solidarity with United Faculty. Your fight is our fight. Yeah. As we all know, this administration concedes nothing without shows of force like this one. And it's absolutely imperative that if we are going to take back control of the university and stay on the front lines of higher education, that we have to continue to work together and we have to continue to show support like this. I can't say enough how much we appreciate that you guys are doing this. Our contract negotiations will begin again next year, and it, everybody is watching this strike and your fight. So I just want to say, solidarity, the GEO supports you. Who's university?
and two uh, are grad students who are teaching us, and the two are non-tenured professors. These are all people who are working for us and need to be uh, paid, and they need to be, they, we need to be giving them everything because uh, we can't have uh, people be going hungry. Uh, we can't have people not being able to pay their bills. Mm -hmm. We can't have them working three jobs and not being able to think about going to classes. They're thinking about feeding themselves. We need to have professors who are here for more than a semester, more than here for two semesters, so that they can be developing curriculum. So as students, their faculty working conditions directly affect our student learning conditions. I'm Robert Wilson from Five for Fifteen. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself, how I got into Five for Fifteen. I was seven years working for McDonald's and only had a 10 cent raise. Can y'all hear me now? Can you hear me now? I was a seven year worker of McDonald's, only getting a 10 cent raise. It wasn't until I became a part of this organization, Fight for 15, did some protests. The day after, I expected to get fired from my job, and I ended up getting promoted. So I say that, I say that so when you fight and come together and fight to take back what's yours, because this is yours, this is what you rightfully deserve. Y'all put the work into it. This is one of the greatest professions to ever take. Y'all are teaching the next generation of people, and I'll be damn sure they're not gonna just leave these schools being the next generation of low-wage workers. So I'm out here to show that Fight for 15, working together with Solidarity with y'all, because one, one disadvantage against y'all, one exploitation against any workers is exploitation against us all. So solidarity. I want y'all to say this. Fight, 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 fight. Organizing is all right. Fight, 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 fight. fight. Organizing is all right. Democracy looks like one struggle, one fight. Teachers, students, staff, unite.